Man, I wonder if that website still even works right there. Anyways, so this is going to be Dead Reckoning. This is the final episode of the base game. And I kind of like it. I wouldn't say it's the worst, but it's definitely not the best chapter in the game. But it's still fun. Nonetheless, it's blood. It's more blood. Um, I'm probably going to take a break after this and then, you know, probably do the plasma pack later. Because I'm not really worried about plasma pack because it is an expansion. It is made by Monolith, but it's also, you know, not the same. So episode three, what do we, what do we learn from that? We have now got Cerberus enemies and Phantasms from episode two. We had spiders in that episode as well. So what's episode four contribute to the table? Well, we get a new gun, the Life Leech, which we don't get just yet. We get that in a little bit. Um, any new enemies? As far as I remember, not really. Um, there's not a whole lot of nonsense going on in this chapter that makes it much different. It's actually easier. It's as hard to imagine as this game being easy goes. It's not too bad. Um, this room is probably the hardest part of the entire game. Excuse me. The hardest part of the entire game. Oh god. There's me using this piece of garbage. I'm sorry. I don't like the um, hairspray. It's not a great weapon. Hang on a second. This just feels... There we go. That's better. I had the... The wire that I have my headphones with just kind of felt a little goofy. It was only transmitting to the left ear. I don't like that. So, remember how I said there's a little bit of some nonsense in this game that doesn't make a whole lot of sense? This. Now, I, I scoured the level for like five minutes, just backtracking and everything the first time I played through this again. And then I honestly just had to think, wait a minute, what if I do that? And uh, that's how you do it. <laughs> so... Yeah, not a really big fan of that part, because it's kind of cryptic. Because it's literally just a death trap as far as you're concerned. So what are the levels like in this area? They're kind of a mixture of flesh-based levels and horror. This is kind of probably where the developers just said, you know what, fuck it, throw everything in the game. And I honestly enjoy it though. It's, it's easy, but in the right way. It's the nice good sandwich of easy. So we'll use the life leech because I'll never use it. Scary as hell looking, by the way. So, point and click, get health back, do fireball damage. That's what that enemy like turns into after like a second of that. It also makes the cultist chant noise um, when you're using it, which is pretty cool. Now, as smart as you think I'd be to use that, I don't. I hardly ever use that weapon. I'm sorry. Uh... It's just not my fan favorite weapon in the game. I use that on Chernabog, I hate to admit, uh, because it's actually extremely damaging. And it's it's kind of that case of the BFG. I don't really like to use those big weapons unless I absolutely have to. Truthfully, when I play Doom, I always have exactly enough ammo to kill the Spider Mastermind, and that's as much as I ever use, because I know what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, you kill that pedestrian in there. They're called Innocents in the game files, I'm pretty sure, and he drops a key. And I have mentioned this before, blood is unique in that the enemies actually dropped the keys that you use to open doors, unlike in Doom and Shadow Warrior, but I don't think I played Shadow Warrior enough to remember if that happens. Because like I said, I've, out of all the build engine games, that's the one I have the least amount of experience with. And I'm not saying that like I, I'm a scrub at it, it's just I've only beat it like twice, and it's not really, I've beaten Duke countless times, I actually know that game pretty damn well. And like I said, already have the Tesla cannon that quick. That's locked and yeah. So this game is pretty much saying, okay, you're at the end, have all the weapons, have all the fun you want. And that's what I like about this. This is a pretty harrowing corner I don't want to take too much damage on. Eh. I can't believe I didn't hit him. Um, and I haven't even mentioned this yet. If you're wanting to play Blood, um, don't play Z-Blood. It's not the same. Um, not to say Z-Blood's bad, but it's not even close to the same as the actual game. I believe it takes place after the events of the game, like this one. Um, and it's it changes levels around, it also moves um, like items, and it's just not the same game. 
I think you fight Chernabog actually on the uh, circus level, if I'm not mistaken. Like, as a mid de like, not even five levels into the game boss. And I don't even remember the explanation. It says it in the text, but I, I could not be asked to remember it. I might play that if you guys want me to, but I'm not really a big fan of it. It's just... I don't know. It's it's not really bad, but if I had the option, I'd play this over that. And that's something that's really cool. Um, if you want a little bit of history about the blood, like, you know, lack of development, I guess you could say. The transfusion mod was made for... Um, I better not die as I keep chalking here. But um, the transfusion mod is only for multiplayer in, um, like, the Dark Places engine, which is a Quake engine I use. Um, then, of course, you have Z-Blood, like I mentioned, which is not really accurate. And then you... Oh, shit. I forgot about you. Um, at least you guys get to see me use this on this, finally, to show you guys how easy these guys actually are to kill. Um, so there's that. And then there's a couple other little, like, things. Um, the level editor tool, I'm not even sure, because there is mods for blood, like the original blood. There's... Like, Death Wish, which I would like to try out one of these days. Which I do know runs in this mod. And then there's also, like... This is something I haven't tested. But somewhere on the Blood Wiki, they mention there's a, like, 3,000 level user pack. And I'm just thinking, that sounds a little... Questionable. Because there's, like, 3,000 and then some, you know, maps for Doom. But that doesn't mean they're all good. I played some pretty shit house levels in um, Doom. Trust me, I I've yeah. There was one that was a speedrunner sort of style one I tried out. That was terrible. I I think it even was a contender for a CAC award, and I played it, and I was like, this is steamy hot garbage. Um, but yeah, trust me. If you want to play Blood, you can play it in DOS. But the problem with DOS, in my opinion, is the resolution is just ass. It's not fun. I'm not a fan of it. And this this level, by the way, it's got a little bit of a... kind of like Episode 2, where we had those levels where they kind of could be completed at any leisure. Um, so that's... one of the things about this level is there's a lot of secrets in it that are... By the way, am I the only one that thinks this? And I probably am. This reminds me so much of Resident Evil 4. Like, right here. And then you'd have the dynamite guy right there. Okay, just now you're seeing it, now you're thinking it, now you're loving it. And yes, that's a Freddy Krueger coat and hat right there. That's a pretty obvious reference at that point. There is a level, I yeah, it's actually in this level set. I think it's the next level in all reality. Um, where we get to go to Crystal Lake, which is awesome. I love those films, they're just fantastic. My favorite horror film, if you're ever curious, is actually the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Fantastic film in terms of lighting. Uh, production value is so gritty. It looks good. I like the way they filmed it. Um, the sequels, eh, not so much. They're still fun, but I definitely prefer the eeriness of um, that film a lot. It really evokes that almost like uh, exploit style that was in the 60s and 70s. And then, of course, the performance is great. I mean, some of it's pretty hit or miss, but like... Come on, guys, quit playing games, quit goofing on me. That is pretty funny to me. And then you have, um... The guy that plays the brother, I believe, is absolutely just eerie. I love when she says, Please help me, nobody cares. No one's gonna hear it. it or whatever. And it's like, he's so, like, convincing when he's doing that role. It's awesome. I mean, that's how you make a good horror movie. You make it convincing. Oh. This is a fantastic film. I could go on about that for hours, and I really could. But that's not what you're here for. You're here for me rambling about other shit while I'm playing video games, I guess. And to see some history. Anyways, I had mentioned earlier the voodoo doll I don't ever use. It's not really a weapon I'm uh, too keen on using. Mainly because the pickups for it are so rare. It's the same with the life leech. I just don't want to waste the time and ammo for it because it's so rare. Um, I think you get a couple of orbs here and there. This is also what that looks like, by the way. It's called a Trap Soul. Um, eh. And you may think, man, you're pretty low on health. You might want to pop that thing out. Uh, no, it's cool. I've got this. Um, what I was going to say is, you'll notice me doing some different tactics now. Is I'm using the chain gun, or sorry, 
You know, it sucks because I played so much Doom, you just call things what you know they are in your heart. Um, the Tommy Gun really is kind of a great go-to weapon for cultists. I haven't mentioned it this until this late in the game. Because it stun locks them, and it also makes it so much easier for you. Oh god, they're gonna get in here and fucking mess my shit in. Okay. And by the way, I will do Plasma Pack. I I just have to take a break after this, because I have literally just been playing through this game in one sitting. What the hell? Okay, that's steamy hot trash. I'm not a fan of that. Oh! But yes, that's something I do love about the Tommy Gun I have failed to mention. I don't know what caught me on fire there. There's no Cerberus. That's really creepy. Um, well, maybe it was like the, uh, like, splash damage of the rocket probably hit me. But yeah, the Tommy Gun really does do a number on cultists because they get stunlocked when you're using it. It's a really great tactic to use. Oh, shit. You see, I see them and I instinctively shoot with another weapon because it's just what I do. Oh, God. But yeah, I'm surprised I've actually been doing really well on this. I say this now. We've already had that mishap with the boots jumping I did earlier, but that was different. I don't think this is the way out. This is a loop around. Yep. Um, so, that's pretty good. I'm actually very happy with how I've been playing this. Because, um, like I said, Blood's a hard game. It's definitely not easy. And if you want to know the preferred weapon for these guys, Tommy Gun. Because you'll see that they stagger really easy. Oh, Jesus. Um... They stagger really damn easily, and you want to make sure you're getting them in that little chain lock. Otherwise, <clears throat> they do a lot of damage to you, and you do not want to mess around with that. And I believe this switch opens up one of the gates on the other side. Also, blood, if you couldn't tell, kind of maze-like. Um, which is a real big turnoff to a lot of people that don't like uh, maze-like shooters. I, myself, I kind of don't like them. But then again, I've also played... Uh, Daggerfall for years, so to me, if you think a game is really cryptic or hard in a maze, um, play Daggerfall. That'll learn you right there, right quick. So, okay, so we gotta go out through this direction. Like I said, we're gonna get a lot of these trapped souls, and it may be tempting to, you know, expend them all right now, but it's not a good idea. You wanna save... It's pretty much like the rule of old school shooters, is you wanna save that good stuff for the really tough enemies. Otherwise, you're pretty much just gonna end up having nothing at the end of the game. Which, that does happen. You only get, like, one healing item for the, uh, final boss fight, if I remember properly. Shit, I hate this level. I'm not gonna lie, it's not a fun, fun time. Mainly because, ugh, it's just water in any game. I'm not a fan of. I mentioned it briefly in one of my older videos. Um, I just don't like water because I was a kid. I remember I went to the ocean, got knocked up by a wave, I looked down, saw absolutely nothing, and um, I've had kind of aquaphobia since. Mainly just um, ocean water, not anything else. I'm not going to cut or anything. That's what... Oh my god, where is he at? Was he just stuck in a wall? Oh my goodness, that is extremely infuriating. Ugh. Alright, that's fine I guess. Just roll with it. I'm not lost, by the way, even though it looks like I am. It's just the fact that this level is so awkward. There's a lot of things in Blood I don't like, and this is one of them. This is the... This and the Aqueducts are some of my least favorite levels in Blood. And Aqueducts is in a Plasma Pack as well. And I do want to play through that first. There we go. Oh no, I'm thinking of something else. Um, Aqueducts is really awful, because... <clears throat> trust me. It's just a not fun level. You end up like... Oh shit, now I've really made a mistake. I was on the right path too, there we go. Um, what happens in that level is you gotta like... There's tons, and there's different roped cultists in that level set by the way. For Plasma Pack. What they do is their gimmick is... They shoot electricity and then the other ones shoot um, just TNT. And there's just tons of them in really tight corners, and it's just a nightmare. I do not like that level at all. And that's one of those ones that's, like, got one of those one-off level gimmicks. See, this is what I was talking about. This is an area that's really hard to remember to get to. Um, what ends up happening is there's, like, these little machine gun wall things that if you don't know about the first time, they pretty much just wreck you instantly because they do so much damage so quickly. And... 
I don't even know what procs them to be 100% honest. So they're just, yeah, I'm not a fan. Uh, there was an example of the jump I was talking about. You can see I got sort of locked in place during my jump arc. And that's what I'm talking about. I know a real human being can't exactly jump and then move around 360 degrees on a dime. But you know what? A real human being can't do this shit in the game in real life anyways. Alright. A little bit of a disaster there, but... Crystal Lake. Oh, man. This is such a cool level. We also get the Kikiki Mama Ma thing in the background, which is... Lots of charm. I love that about this game. It's just so charming. If Blood had a real name, other than Blood, it would probably be called Charming, the FPS game. It really is. Oh, God. And this level does have an underwater section, which I don't like. But I'm going to tell you guys a pretty cool pro strat on how to, uh, you know, not worry about it too much. And if you're curious, yes, the zombies are basically reskins of the uh, Innocents. Because it's kind of hard to see at this point, but they are. Or they're based on their design, I should say. What? And there's the, um... Uh, yeah, you can interact. It says, kill, 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 kill. <laughs> I love this game. It's really got a lot of charm. It, it really does. But the only problem is, if you don't know what the references are, it's kind of... Eh. There was even a reference to that in, um... Oblivion, if you never played Oblivion. Um, I believe it was in the Lighthouse during the Dark Brotherhood. You also got to see that, too. And if you're curious, why do I expel a shotgun blast every now and then, just like that, if I use one? Well, I don't want to waste the reload animation time. I'm honestly that picky. I know. I'm just rude. I'm sorry. Okay. And this room is a disaster, so we're gonna pop some flares in there. Ugh. Flare gun really is a good weapon. I've mentioned it before. It's a great weapon, but in terms of, like, actual damage, it's a damage over time weapon, and I'm not a big fan of those. Because they really require... If you're stuck in a room with, like, ten enemies, that's rare, but... If you're stuck in a room with a bunch of enemies, you're actually gonna end up, um... Having to dodge them the entire time. And that can be pretty harrowing. Come on. Ah! Okay, that was pretty tight. It's just those little rooms like that just make my heart just... Ugh. <sighs> Alright. But yeah, I remember the first time I played this level, I was so, like... Oh my god, it's exactly that. And I told my dad, and he's like, Oh, that's actually pretty cool. He wouldn't play it because he's an old person. You know, he doesn't like those things. But still, I think the funniest thing is my dad watched me play Duke Nukem 3D a long time ago. And he's like, you know, this game's so damn stupid. But I can understand it being good at the time. And I'm like, really? Wow. And I love this. This looks so cool. I know it's simple texture work, and it's really ugly. But it looks really cool to me. Those of you who don't know, I'm from Oregon. I don't really show it very often. I don't say yeehaw every five seconds, if you couldn't tell. Um, that's actually a misconception. There's not a lot of Oregonians that have accents. Only the assholes do. Which is most, if not everybody here. But still, um, yeah, it's like... I grew up where there's a lot of forests, uh, pines, and crazy stuff like that. So, seeing forest levels in games is always really cool, because... I feel at home... I feel at home. I don't know, that's not even a song. I was gonna say the status quo is not a punishment, but now it feels like home. There you go. If you don't know what I'm singing, that's I'm more than okay with that. I'm actually wearing a perfect circle shirt right now. But that's not in a perfect circle song. So Alright, so we need to do the um go down the shitter method one more time here. But this time it's a bit different. So, what we're looking for is a box of shot shells, because we have the right key, and this is actually harder to fall down than you'd think. Just like it would be in real life. Now, I don't have any scuba gear, so this makes it even more of a pain in the ass. No pun intended, as we just went down a shitter. But, um, I have plenty of health. I mean, I've got that portable med kit. This is the way you want to go. This box of shells is pretty much your guideline for how to get out of this hellhole. And just keep healing using your med kit if you feel like your health's getting too low. The screen's gonna get dark, but, you know, I can handle that. I can see in the dark. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Okay. Uh, that's totally how it works in real life, by the way. And like I said, we're starting to see boss monsters as common enemies. 
All right, so fire and brimstone. Pretty easy level. It starts off right away with us getting beaten down by that bastard, so... So my best advice for this level... This is kind of what I call a gauntlet level. It's not like the next level is also a gauntlet level, but this is a little bit of a cave and gauntlet level put together. Um, you know what's really cool, though? I haven't mentioned this yet. As much as I don't like Plasma Pack, um, there actually is a really cool level in there called um, the Dungeon, which is actually literally based completely off of uh, Hexen and Heretic, so I think that's awesome. Hexen more or less, because Hexen is totally different than Heretic. Hexen is more or less um, sort of like your puzzly kind of adventure game, and then Heretic is more or less a Doom clone, like in the flesh. So if you're ever curious, I will play through those eventually. It's, you know, I had a really shitty job for a long time, like five years. And now that I got a new job and I'm much happier making better money, I don't feel as stressed. You know, even though I just literally did work eight days in a consecutive row and on Thanksgiving, um, I'm not, like, worried. I don't... Oh, Jesus. I don't come home stressed or anything like that. It's it's pretty nice. I love it. It's a great time. I get to work with some great people. And, uh, yeah. Hello! Okay. Thank you for interrupting me, my friend. Yeah, that's fine. I'll take it as a pretty shitty death there, but whatever. I'll roll with it. Um, anyways, yeah, I'll play through Heretic and Hex, and they just, they're long games that take a lot of time to play. They're not, like, long, I guess, I should say, but I had to remember all the puzzles, and that's something that, um, you know, there's a really good channel I watch that I love a lot. His name is, uh, GSTAR321. He is one of the best LPers ever, and, um, you know, I take a lot of influence from him on this philosophy. You have to play a game at least three times, bare minimum, before you can even say you know what you're talking about. Because if you don't know what you're talking about, um, it really shows when you're playing it. And um, nobody wants to watch you play a game that you're bad at. I mean, I don't either. You know, there's actually a couple of things I don't do. Um, if I... Because I myself, you know, look at stuff on the internet as much as you guys do. Um... If I see a video and I'm like, oh cool, that's something that interests me, there's two things I listen for. Really bad mic quality, and um, the other one that really bothers me a lot is rambolic editing style. Like, they try to be professional, but they say like, uh, 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 you know, I don't want to name names, because then that makes me feel like an asshole, but, you know, there's definitely like a quality that I look for. And, um, if I'm playing a game that's really hard, I'm gonna die, and I admit it. I've said it in the beginning of this game. Um, and I'm not playing it, like, proficiently 100% how you're supposed to play the game, obviously. But, uh, you know, I definitely, you know, want to make sure I'm playing the game properly. And if I played a game like Heretic or Hexen, especially Hexen, which I did start, but I never finished because I had a lot of, like, crap going on in life, um... You know, there's there's a level of, like, knowledge you have to have going into it. And just like Blood, Blood is a hard game, and you can see this just in the way I've been playing it. All my deaths have actually been accidental for the most part. I think it's only been, like, five total. And, um, you know, that's really important for me. So this is the Ganglion Depths. This is our final level. Like, this is what I call a true, like, final level. Because the next one is technically our last, um stage level. This one, this is a testament to everything you've learned in the game at this point. It's all about dodging, it's all about reflex, it's all about everything in this level. And, um, we're gonna want to be pretty much hammering down on this plasma gun the entire time. I'm not trying to say this is how you should play it, but this is how you should play it. Um, oh my god. So, we also have a problem. We have that mini boss she all down there. She's going to be spawning spiders constantly. And we've got um, gargoyles outside that can probably not make their way in here. I don't think they can. And um, we're also going to be encountering every type of enemy in the game. All the mini-bosses. Everything. This is literally how you make a final level, in my opinion. In any FPS game, you just kind of test the player on everything they've learned the entire game. And, of course, what would it be without... Douchebag traps, you know, this is exactly what I was talking about. This is a 
literal test of all the things you've learned this entire game. And what's one thing you've learned from the beginning of Blood? It's not a fun game. It's extremely frustrating and loves to just uh, do some pretty harrowing stuff to you. And this is a very unsafe idea. I would not recommend it. Anywho. Yeah, I, I definitely like this level a lot. I think it's how you make a... Because that's something I think most games nowadays don't do. Is uh, they don't test the player the way that they need to. Because a player should be constantly learning and adapting through gameplay. And I think one of the best examples of that is Serious Sam. Um, in Serious Sam 1, that game incorporates all of its mechanics almost seamlessly to where the point is, I'd say, if you want to see a game that does really, really good mechanics and how to teach them into the player, the first Serious Sam game absolutely nails it for you. It really does. It's... It's honestly one of the best games in general, but it's also, like I said, the best to teach the player. This is how enemies behave. We're going to throw them at you uh, carefully, and then we're going to do, like, this and make sure you've got it pretty much down. And then after that, they're just like, you know what? You got enough learning in. We're going to make it hard. And then they keep making it harder. Um, I think the new Doom kind of did that pretty well, too. I wouldn't say it was, like perfect, but it definitely... You know, I did play through the new Doom, if you're curious. I had a lot of stuff happen in this time frame, but... Um, you know, I, I think the new Doom was great. I actually enjoyed the entire thing. Um, there was a couple parts I didn't like here and there, but I felt like at the very end, I was like, oh, this is the end of the game, I guess. And, um... I'm not saying I was disappointed by the ending, but I definitely... I didn't see it coming. I was like, oh... That's the... okay. And, yeah, I was a little bit disappointed, but, I mean, for what we got, I think the new Doom was great. I'm not going to call it Doom 2016 every time, that's just redundant. Uh, let's just call it what it is, Doom 4. Um, I, I liked it a lot. I might do a playthrough of it on here. I have a really beastly computer now, so I'm not really worried about, you know, anything like that. Oh god. Like I said, this game is like throwing all the hard shit at me at this point. It's like, you know what you're doing. You should be fine with all these enemies at this point. Uh, and this also adds a lot of stress to the player movement-wise, because now I've got to be aware of spiders, I've got to be aware of... Oh god. Oh shit, they're all over the place. Okay, that's, that's enough of them. I, I think they've They've definitely outlived their welcome. Uh, there we go. Probably overkill on the spider's part, but you know what? They they had it coming. And a funny thing is, I've actually kind of overcame my fear of spiders recently. I've been taking them out at work, putting them outside. We get a lot of them because I work in a hotel. Um, but yeah, we get a lot of little, little house spiders here and there. Um, I take them outside. At home, I also take them outside now. I've kind of learned how to control spiders a bit better. That sounded really s and -M -y. But, um... Yeah, they're, they're really... I'm not really afraid of them anymore. I'm actually kind of tempted to eventually get a tarantula. I don't think I will recently, but... You know, I, I definitely think, um... I've kind of overgrown that fear. I've overgrown most of my fears in life, but spiders is one I've always wanted to get over. Because... They're everywhere. There's no point in being afraid of them. Um... So, I figured, screw it, let's just try and overcome this fear. And that's going really well. I'm, uh, pretty comfortable with it, actually. But, yeah, enough about the spiders, let's talk about what's going on here. So, we are very close to the end of the game. Um, the Ganglion Depths, like I said, this is probably the true last level. The next one's kind of a gimmick level. Um, and it's pretty gimmicky. Um, I'm not trying to make it seem like it's bad, it's just, it's definitely a gimmick level. Um, it's not very long, and then, of course, the last level is kind of uh, a little bit disappointing, but you know what? For what blood is, I could care less. So we're going to jump over these with these boots of jumping we picked up. You can make that jump without it. I'm just doing this because I want to make sure I'm jumping over it without having to worry. And, of course, this is going to be it. This is in the flesh. God and Freeman in the flesh or more or less the hazard suit. I'm done. <laughs> um, this is like a gimmick level, like I said. So we've got um, 
really cool texturing that never shows up anywhere else in the game. That's why I say I hate that this is a gimmick level, because it's so cool looking. Um, I'm actually a fan of these kind of weird, like... Uh, okay, that that fire damage. I was saying about it earlier. Um, oh my god, that literally lasted, like, for a minute straight there, it felt like. Um, yeah, you can see the enemy count's not very big. It's only 37 mobs. Um... That's not really too hard to deal with, these little mouth vaginas everywhere. You see those actually a lot in Unloved, um, which are straight from the Z-Blood pack if you're a resource person and want to get into making some Doom levels. Alright, so... Like I said, if you're... I know some people that are like, this kind of stuff creeps them out. Like, being inside the belly of a bigger beast. Um, that's why I like this level a lot. It's... It's probably referencing some movie or something, but I don't care. It's it's just a really cool concept that before you get to the final big guy, you gotta go through a big beast. I love that. Um, Dexter from um, Ape Escape also has a similar level too, Dexter's Island, which is a really cool level in general. I just actually like levels like that. Because, like, think about it. I'm swimming in a creature's stomach acid. Nice. Um... But yeah, this isn't a very long level either, which kind of... I guess it's a blessing and a curse. I actually kind of wish it was a longer level, because it's so interesting looking and everything. But, you know, want and get two different things, I suppose. But it does involve a little bit of swimming, which, eh, as I've said before, I'm not a big fan of. But hey, it's, it's, it's still a really cool level. I did have to look this up the first time I played the game, because it's not a very easily telegraphed level. There's a lot of stuff in it that just doesn't make sense. But, um, yeah, if you listen carefully, every now and then you hear, like, a fart noise. So it's, like, graphic gross level mixed in with a kind of funny thing. So that's pretty much that level. And the Hall of Epiphany. This is the final level of blood. Or at least the base game, I should say. <sighs> All right. Now, it's not hard. It's pretty easy I guess it depends on how well you've learned the bosses and everything so go ahead and shoot that skull a little bit of a doom reference I'm assuming I just assume because I'm an asshole ouch um there is a couple of heals in here like I said there's like one so use what you learned and um, you should be fine so next we're gonna fight Sheol and if you remember what I did in that boss fight. Uh, you know, I actually want to get some health back. Let's go ahead and use Life Leech on her. There we go. That's probably about as much as I'm going to use on it, because I do want to save some of it for Chernabog himself. I want to see if I can do that. It's really easy to get her stuck in a corner, and she just literally just tanks rockets like crazy. I barely tell she died. Okay. The enemies like that don't have a very, like, obvious death sound or anything. So next is Cerberus. Probably the easiest. Like I said, this gun is just absolutely out of control with damage. Now, that thing has a doubled fire rate when it has both heads. Uh, you can see how much damage that actually does. Uh, should be able to pretty much... T he moves slower as well, so I'm not worried. Okay, so that's Cerberus taken care of. And obviously the game's not that rude. It's not like, alright, here's the final boss. You still have to do a little bit of dirty work to get to him. And of course, if you played the beginning of the game on your own and you saw the cutscene, this is supposed to be the area that you actually, uh, yeah, got to see him in. So that also explains why those enemies are there. Alright. So, let's do it. Put you down. Let's do it. Okay. And that's Chernabog. Um, if you've played uh, Void, yeah, that's that's actually in Void, I'm pretty sure. Somewhere. Um, and if you've ever played um, Z-Blood, you see this quite a bit in the game, too. And I think I should be able to finish him off with a Life Leech pretty easily. 
box. That's what I always think it says. And that's it. Good, bad, I'm the guy with the gun. Or skull, if you will. But yeah, that's blood. That is literally all of the vanilla game of blood. And I hope you guys really enjoyed it because I had a lot of fun playing through it. I'll do the uh, plasma pack on my own time. Um, it's just a little bit of work. I, I'm not as familiar with it as you'd think, even though I've played through it quite a few times. Um, so yeah, I didn't die very often as you saw. Um, I didn't really have any hiccups in there anywhere. I think I got lost on a little bit on one of the levels, but that was only for a few seconds. And uh, it's also because it's a really badly telegraphed level in my opinion. Um, so yeah, if you want to check this out, like I said, um, it's a worthwhile experience because truthfully, Blood is a great shooter, even though maybe you have different thoughts now after seeing it, but I still like Blood a lot. I think it's definitely a polished, good game. Extremely frustratingly hard, sure, but as you saw, all my deaths were only if I got like... I think they honestly all were just accidental. They weren't even anything that really was my fault. Probably one of them was, but just gonna say it wasn't. Anyways, thank you guys everyone for watching. As always, stay classy, and um, maybe I'll do some custom blood levels. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe. I'm still more of a Doom guy at heart. But of course, check out um, the Blood Wiki. They got some cool stuff on there. I don't really like fan fiction, but if you do, they got tons of that. Art. Um... And of course, that's where you can get most of the good dope stuff for this game as well. Um, and as always, thank you so much to um, you guys as well as um, M210 for making this beautiful mod I've played over the years. It really does put a smile on my face to see it finalized. It is awesome. My goodness, I can't thank you enough, man. And it really shows the dedication of the fans when they make something that they want. And uh, yeah. Hopefully we'll do a plasma pack really soon. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it in a couple hours. I just want to take a quick breather, get some more coffee, take a shower or something. But yeah, I'll see you guys then. Have a good one.